What's going on guys? Have you ever thought about taking two pumps and putting them on the same return line? Well today, that's what we're doing. Coming up. Hey guys, this is Hitter Miss Aquariums. I'm Hitter and uh, this channel is all about following my saltwater journey and then also taking whatever tips and tricks I learned throughout the way and maybe benefiting you so you don't make the same mistakes that I did. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, please consider subscribing. All right guys, just some real quick uh, things that you're gonna need when you're doing this. Obviously PVC that you need. Uh, I, I'm using three quarters inch here. It's already attached, but um, the amount of unions you want to use in this situation for me was three, um, a right angled uh, piece. Uh, for This is a T valve with a thread uh, on it to connect to the other one. I'll show you why in a minute. The other return pump, the Eheim. A tape measure, um, cement primer and, and PVC cement. I always use uh, Sharpies to mark the pipes. And then, um, you know, a clean, uh, just a wipe off rag, something you can throw out afterwards. And then a uh, pipe cutter of some sort uh, for the PVC pipe. So those items should get you where you need to go here we have a eheim 1262 it's rated at 900 gallons per hour but as you can see i have um some head pressure things i did some funky things with the uh with the return line so first we have 90 degree elbow we have uh a dual a, re a single reactor but it has um carbon and GFO in it so that is taking up some pressure um, then we have another 90 degree elbow that goes down um, and uh, being the novice that I was I made it go down so that it could be flush with this piece of wood here and then I could mount it um, probably not the best idea but then we have um, two return lines with two more 90 degree angles plus uh, two more at the bottom um, which really can hurt your head pressure. Now, there is probably a decent amount of flow, as you can see, going through the tank right now, but I want to increase that even further. So what are we gonna do? Um, we're gonna leave this pump in here, but we're going to add a second pump for redundancy, um, which is the Vectra uh, S1. Okay, so let's talk about measurements for a hot second. Um, this, this entire sump from front to back is, we'll just call it 17 inches. Um, we, want the, we want the two pumps facing each other. So the Eheim, we want as far as we can get it here. And then the Vectra, we want as far as we can get it there. So um, on the back wall. So really, we're at like 16 inches. So that's gonna come into consideration when we measure uh, the length of the pipe and all the attachments that are in there we want the total to be you know no more than let's just say 15 16 inches or else we're going to run into some plumbing issues we're going to have one more union here and then we're going to have a t-line that splits off to the other pump so uh let's uh let's get into the uh to the actual build itself and see how it does all right so this is where the Vectra is going to be um, all the way up against the glass as far as possible. Um, I want to put unions in here, so I have one union so I can remove this pump if I need to. Um, I'm going to put in uh, another union so I can remove this other pump if possible. Um, so what I want to do is I want to put a union on each side so that I can just take this piece out if I need to and then if, if worse comes to worse I can just bridge these two together. So this is where uh, the new pump is going to be. Now I just have some, some plastic uh, tubing um, and, a, uh, and a threaded connection so that's why this is threaded. Uh, and then uh, so what's going to happen is if you can imagine this will be the Vectra this will be the Eheim. They'll be facing each other and then both pumping out here. So right here, we're already at 15 inches. And as I discussed, I really want another um, union on here. So 
so probably going to have to cut this pipe down a little bit, like let's just say an inch, and then that should allow for uh, for a little bit more room for the union. So let's go ahead and get this. Let's just show you real quick how we uh, how we glue some of this stuff together. Since you use unions, it's not really super imperative that you get all the uh, angles correct, which is one of the beautiful benefits of using a union. So the first thing that, that you do is you don't spill purple crap all over the place. It looks like Barney. Um, the primer, which is purple, I've seen it clear, I've seen it blue. Um, I put it around the, the uh, edge of whatever I'm gluing and then you just put a small amount, you don't want to overdo it here, um, on the edge where the purple glue was. And then if, if that happens, if you get some, I can't really see that all that well, but if you get some on the inside, I usually just use my finger or you can use a paper towel um, and wipe that off because you really don't want that on the inside of your plumbing. All right, so, and then you just push these together as far as they'll go and you just kind of hold it there for a second. Maybe about five, ten seconds. And then if you have a ton of excess um, glue on the outside, I usually wipe that off um, just because, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit easier. So this is a great tool. Um, this is a, uh, a PVC cutter, two and a half inch. Uh, you can get this from Amazon. I'll put in a link uh, below. And um, basically what you do is makes cutting these so much easier you just kind of put this um, snug against here you want to make sure that it's level when you're cutting uh, to the pipe you don't want to cut it like on an angle like that or anything like that so you want it relatively flush and then you just ratchet it down uh, and it cuts up nice clean uh, relatively straight if you did it right <laughs> um, amount off there so I need to go find that piece because I'm gonna need it all right so you can see it's kind of starting to come together here and then what I'll do with this piece that I just cut off is we'll use it over here and then put the other union on on this side and I can cut this last pipe here uh, longer or shorter if needed so that everything lines up correctly so you can see here this is where the second pump is gonna lay they're gonna be kind of close to each other but this has flexible tubing, so you can kind of move it back or, for, or forth if you need to. I do want to make this quick point. Um, whenever you're gluing unions, you can see there's a side that's already glued here, and then there's this side too. You never just want to take this out and then just glue it on here, because what will happen is this other sleeve, you can't get back on there. So when you're gluing this side, make sure you put the union on, the union sleeve on first, and then glue that. That way, uh, you don't have to cut your pipe apart. I know this because I've done it before and trust me, um, it's very frustrating when that happens and you realize after the fact that you made a huge mistake. So she's all set up. I'm gonna let her uh, dry off for about two hours here as recommended. Then we are going to um, shut the return pump off, uh, reattach the final pieces, glue the final pieces, and uh, let that set up for about, I don't know, a good half hour, 45 minutes. Um, while the uh, return is off and then we're gonna fire it up and see what happens so we want to leave as much as possible on the end that we're gluing which is this end so when we cut we want to leave at least a little bit of a lip there then the last thing we need to glue is this union here. And remember what I said, whenever you glue these unions, make sure this thing is on there. Because um, if not, it's going to screw you all up. The other thing I'm going to do is put a towel on here in hopes that... If anything does drip, it goes on the towel because you don't want this stuff in your tank, that's for sure. All right, so this is kind of the setup here. Um, I just screwed this in uh, for the uh, Eheim pump. As you can see, they're going to be pretty close together, but uh, I need to trim this and then put that on there. 
So we're gonna trim it. This was gonna stand up straight if we want it to. Probably wanna trim it. that I got from uh, Lowe's just for cutting pipe and stuff and um, it's just a rigid thing you can cut small PVC with it but um, it's a lot harder than the other one so there you have it the last thing you're gonna do is just put this on there as far as it'll go and you have A two pump turn. So they're both going to be pulling water out of here. Get in the sump for the very first time. So let's see how we do. So there you have it. There's the Eheim, the original pump, and there's the Vectra. So they're both in there, nice and happy. And uh, we're gonna get them turned on and see what, uh, what happens with the flow. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, you know, definitely a couple things I want to mention. One, um, make sure that you don't just have a half of an inch lip when you're gluing PVC together. You want to fully uh, have enough of uh, the PVC pipe showing so that when you connect the two, it seats fully. Um, <laughs> I found out the hard way later on. Uh, I did this several weeks ago. I just got to the video now. But um, if it's too short, it there's definitely a possibility that the cement could uh, become unbonded and then you get 1400 gallons per hour of water shot directly in your face. So um, definitely make sure that uh, you have a good full seat there. Uh, looking back, that's one of the things I would change. The other one is I would add check valves to each one of the returns, which I mean, one of the main reasons why we do this is for redundancy. Um, and maybe you only have a single return line instead of two. So um, on another build, I'm going to do, I'm upgrading my uh, plumbing. I'm going to do a um, return pump on each return line as opposed to having them hooked up in parallel like they are now. But if you just have one return line, um, this parallel build would be great for you. However, make sure um, that you have check valves on each one of the uh, outputs of the return pump so that if one of them stops working for whatever reason, the other one doesn't just, the water doesn't just go up and then right down the pipe of uh, the other return pump and then it will blow out the intake and you won't get any return in your tank. So looking back on it, that's something that I would have definitely changed. But um, you know, seeing as how my, uh, my plumbing is getting ready to change again here pretty shortly, um, I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. I don't think the pumps are going to go out um, in the next week. Of course, with my luck, who knows? And that's, you know, famous last words, right? But I um, hope you enjoyed. hope you learned something. Um, and, uh, and let me know in the comments below what you think. So we'll catch you guys later. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.